to get this together. We absolutely positively appreciate the fact that you're here. And I say we took it upon ourselves. I have to say, Deanne really is the uh, <coughs> driving force behind all of this. And so um, Deanne deserves a big, big, big thank you.
and water and energy use, and I'm pretty intimate with the, um, the entire city from that. So um, just to speak to some of the things I focus on, um, uh, I'm really interested in seeing a strong green building ordinance for the city for many reasons that I think we'll probably be talking about today, so I'll, I'll leave that for a little bit later. I'm interested in seeing more cooperation between the city schools and um, the city, and I'm also um, interested in uh, seeing um, excuse me, a, um, a people-friendly transportation system for the city. And so that's um, kind of my platform and my intro, and um, I'm Scott. Mine was an uh, unconscious decision to live here. I was born here. <laughs> I was born right up the road uh, at the Cat Medical Center. I grew up on Pinecrest Avenue, attended Glenwood Elementary School, K through 6. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, we moved right outside the city limits and I attended Drake Hills High School. Uh, after college at the University of Mississippi, uh, I moved back to Decatur and right up the road here at 523 Sycamore Drive. Uh, during that time, a couple of things happened in 98, 99. Uh, I was first approached uh, to help on the uh, Millennium Committee. That was a big party we had, a New Year's Eve party in downtown Decatur, uh, where we restored the historic clock in the courthouse square. But more importantly, it was sort of the first time I'd ever been tapped on the shoulder and asked that, you know, your community needs your help. Would you, would you, would you volunteer your hours and your time to do this? And I really enjoyed it. I grew up with two parents in the city. Uh, my mom was very much involved in the school system, a PTA parent. Um, did a lot of it at Glenwood. My dad was involved in a lot of different things in Decatur. So I grew up with that philosophy that, you know, it's great to live in this community, it's a wonderful community, um, but you can't just sit on the sideline and, and, and just enjoy all the different amenities we have here. You've got to get involved in it, your time, in it, your energy. So when that happened in 98, I really took a liking to that. I worked with a lot of great people in that committee um, and started working a lot with the Decatur Business Association. I've been a member of the Decatur Business Association for about 15 years now. Um, I've also sat on the board for about eight years on the DBA board, served as president in 2010, uh, co-chaired the beach party for three years, co-chaired the concerts on the square. Through that involvement with the DBA, I've been able to do a lot of other things in the city. Uh, served on the Infield Task Force in 06. Uh, we did the uh, Police Academy in 2001. I've done the City Schools 101 class uh, in 2010. And currently serving on the uh, Clifton Corridor Steering Committee, which will be, uh, I'll represent Decatur with a few other people, and we'll monitor <coughs> that progress and see how that's going to impact Decatur and hopefully get a lot of your input and steer that project uh, accordingly. Um, so in Decatur, I've done a lot of things like, like that. We've uh, worked a lot with the city. I've worked with just about every department. I've worked a lot with the, uh, with the police department, with engineering, with, with, uh, with sanitation, with a lot of the event folks up on the square or up on the city. Um, so a lot of that background sort of led me to where we are today. I'm a small business owner in Decatur. We started the Pure Station about a year and a half ago. It was two years ago. So uh, I've got a lot of interest in Decatur. My daughters both go to school in Decatur. My two-year-old is at the Fraser Center up at the high school, and my six-year-old is in kindergarten at Claremont. So again, having, uh, having grown up here, having watched this community change a lot over the last 30 years, I think we have a major responsibility to that growth moving forward, but also keep a strong sense of community, protect our neighborhoods, uh, watch, the, watch downtown and watch it grow, but, but also in a very sensible way. So there's a lot of the same interests that I have, that you have, that we all have here. Uh, and that's, I think, what, what our mission here today and moving forward is, is to protect that growth, make sure Decatur stays on, on, on track, and, um, and uh, we'll go for the questions now. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Um, Diving into the first topic, uh, thinking about the strategic plan that I mentioned, there's four broad principles that inspired 16 goals that the city will try to achieve. Uh, that's potentially a lot of work, assuming the city can't do them all at once, uh, which would not seem likely. Uh, the question is, where should the city place its priorities, and how will you prioritize your time as commissioner to help achieve those goals? So we've, we've laid out the goals the, the, um, for the city, and we're just trying to kind of size up which one of those of uh, the principles and the goals you kind of see um, um, as where you will place your time. So uh, Scott, let's have you go first this time. Well, I think, I think right now we're starting to see a lot of things impacting downtown. Um, we have uh, a lot of 
development opportunities that were kind of sidetracked uh, during the recession, those things are starting to come back now. Uh, we have some that impact the neighborhoods, some that don't impact the neighborhoods. Um, but we also have some interesting opportunities with the Callaway property transitioning over from a state or a government-owned property where we don't get any tax incentives off of that to something that will that will impact our, our tax our tax dollars. So I think with downtown development, I think that's that's a huge priority because that's the core of our town and a very important economic driver in our city. Um, but we also have to balance that with our neighborhoods. When I grew up here in Decatur, we did not have a very vibrant downtown. We had a great looking downtown, we just didn't have any in it. Um, but our neighborhoods and our schools were strong. Those are the two pillars in this community, neighborhoods, schools. Downtown is an amenity, it's a great amenity. And we have a lot of choices there now uh, that we didn't have when I was growing up here. So it's the protection and balancing of those two things. The school system, very strong, very good shape. Neighborhoods, great neighborhoods. I've lived in a lot of different ones over here. Great neighborhoods, downtown, it's going to be developed. It's going to have some things going on in it. We've got to watch it to make sure it's the best best growth and the best, uh, best possible outcome for us. All right, thanks, Scott. And uh, Greg, can you talk about your priorities as commissioner? Yes, I think I've already spoken to some of my priorities initially, and um, I agree with Scott. You know, a lot of things he said are absolutely true. Um, probably within the next 10 years, we're going to see pretty much the entire downtown of Decatur potentially be built out. Um, there's a lot of properties that <coughs> one Scott mentioned, the Callaway property, the Trinity Triangle, the Bride, huge piece of property. And I feel like that we, I've kind of focused on this green building ordinance, and I think that one of the reasons for that is we want really high quality development. And Scott, he's saying the same things about this really, but I feel like if we had a strong green building ordinance, what it does is it raises the bar. You get a higher quality of developer, you get a higher quality of development, and there's just many other reasons to kind of focus on that kind of uh, infrastructure and for the city. I feel like um, there um, is a really important that we have, you know, as I've already mentioned also, that to have a transportation system. Like if you look at the entire city and you kind of stand back and you imagine, you look and see what is, what is the city composed of mostly. It's mostly um, composed of, you know, most of the city property <coughs> is actually roads and sidewalks. And so I think we should focus our development and make sure that we have a really great transportation system and a people-friendly transportation system, that we do development in a very um, thoughtful kind of way. And um, I also feel like that as far as growth in the uh, residential area, um, there's going to be a lot of challenges there too. We're noticing a lot of gentrification <coughs> along those lines, and I think we really need to be thoughtful about that and really think carefully about what we want as a city when we go ahead and start going on with that kind of development. And um, I also feel like, um, you know, like we have talked a bit about annexation too. That's kind of a, a big topic a lot also, and what we want to do as far as that. I think it's a very complex issue, and I think that's one of the things, but as a city, we need to have a, a, a big conversation about that, about whether we would like to have properties annexed in the city, um, just commercial property, the pluses and minuses of that. There's a lot of different pluses and minuses to those type of things. Um, do we want to have, you know, say for instance, some of the particular properties, do we want to have properties um, more to the city annexed that are more changed? Do we want to have the extra, um, are we going to make any taxes? Are we going to have tax positive uh, related to that? So there's a lot of different issues kind of related to that. And to kind of echo what Scott said too, really the foundation of our community is, is the community growth. Really. And so the community will be here, you know, it's been here for a very long time, it'll be here a long time after we're here. And I think the core of what Decatur is, is the community. I think as long as the strong, we have a strong community, then the business will follow. And I think it'll attract whatever business we need. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll move on to the next topic. Jeff? I see what we're going to do with this kind of egg here. We'll get to ask a nice open-ended question.